Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audio Books, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Management Studies, SOMS, Bachelor of Business Administration, Retailing, Bureau, Revised. Semester 2. Minus 104 Brazilian KIS Retail Management Perspectives and Communication. Unit 2 Retail Planning Process. 2.0 Objectives. After studying this unit, you should be able to define planning, detail the planning process and types of plans, find barriers in planning process, identify qualities of an effective plan, and explain benefits of the retail planning process. 2.1 Introduction You have learned the concept, principles and functions of management in unit. 1. This unit has a great role to play in the process of understanding the concept of retailing as well as able to plan for effective retailing, which would not only be beneficial to the customer, but also to the organization. Involved in retailing business, retail planning forms one of the essential and major activity for any retail organization, which is one of the core functions aimed at effective delivery as well as fulfilling goals of the organization. In this unit, you will learn an overview of the retail planning process including its features, steps involved and types of plans. You will further learn barriers to effective planning and also the qualities and benefits of a good plan. 2.2 Retail Planning Process The core of achieving success in an organization is the proper planning of the strategy to be adopted in short as well as in the long run. It has been well said, if you fail to plan then you plan to fail. Such is the importance of planning. In planning managers use facts, reasonable presumptions and constraints to visualize and formulate necessary activities required to achieve desired results. In the words of Macfarlane planning is the concept of executive action that embodies the skills of anticipating influencing and controlling the nature and direction of change. An obvious question for a retailer arises, why is he in business? Or in other words, what is his relevance in business? Thus there should be a clear-cut mission for a retailer which will inspire him for making earnest efforts for achieving success. As in every organization, in retail organization also, there are two components of planning mission and vision. While the mission outlines the Goal of the enterprise and the strategy to be pursued, vision motivates for the future development and expansion of the activities. The recent developments in the IT sector have made it possible to collect the data and disseminate it for proper planning. With the help of detailed analysis of the data, the target markets and the customers are identified. Subsequently the resource markets lay from where the products will be purchased and the destinations e where the products will be supplied are located in this context human resource development plays a vital role in assigning the jobs to the appropriate people. Keeping in view the prevalent market trends, the pricing strategy is evolved to make it more competitive and profitable. The retailer also has to comply with the ethics and laws of the market. He has to follow the local, state, national and international regulations for present and future action. To monitor the planning, he has to develop a proper mechanism for control and evaluation. 2.3 Features of Planning The following are the identifiable features of planning. 1. Planning is a process of determining the future course of action. 2. Planning requires forecasting of future situations. The effectiveness of planning depends upon the accuracy of forecasting. 3. Planning is done at all levels of organization. Thus, plans are developed at the top management level division level, department level and section level also. 4. Planning involves selection of the right course of action. There may be several ways of achieving an objective of an organization. Effective planning involves selection of such alternative that provides maximum benefit to the organization compared to other alternatives. 5. Planning is a continuous managerial function. Plans are required for undertaking all managerial activities effectively. Thus, plans are required for official functioning and for leading the organization towards the desired position in future. 2.4 Steps in planning There is no universally applicable planning process. 
The process varies from organization to organization and even within the organization at different levels such as top management, division, department, etc. The process may differ. Figure 2.1 shows steps in the planning process that are applicable with minor modifications to all types of plans. Look at the screen as shown in figure, there are 8 steps in the planning process. Let us learn each step of the planning process 1. Identification of opportunities Business environment is dynamic and ever-changing changes create many opportunities. One has to study the changes and spot out the right opportunities. For example, the Indian economy is growing at a rate of 9% for the last two years and as a result the purchasing power of the population is increasing. The rise in income and changing consumption capabilities of a large group of consumers in India opened up many business opportunities for retailers. The retailers who identified such business opportunities have established big retail showrooms in various product categories and are expanding their business year by year. Their business plans and expansion plans are based on their ability to identify the right opportunities at the right time. 2. Setting objectives. Once the opportunities are identified, the next step in the planning process is establishing objectives. Objectives specify the results expected. The managers should be clear about the desired result of a plan. The desired result may be in terms of profit to be achieved. Market share, turnover, sales, customer retention, etc. Thus, setting objectives provides for identification of endpoints of what is to be done, where primary emphasis should be given, and what is to be accomplished by the execution of a plan. 3. Determining planning premises. Planning premises are planning assumptions. In other words, the premises are the expected internal and external conditions that influences directly or indirectly the plans and their execution in an organization. The external premises include political, social, technical, competitive, economic and so on. The internal premises include company policies, human as well as financial resources, strengths and weaknesses, etc. Plans are formulated generally by taking both internal and external premises as applicable to a type of plan. 4. Identification of alternatives. It is believed that an objective can be achieved through several ways. For example, if a retailing company aims to increase sales volume, it can introduce some sales promotion schemes like discounts, free gifts, one-to-one -one offers and so on. It can promote aggressively by releasing a series of advertisements, taking up door-to-door -door campaigns, erecting hoardings at various key points and sponsoring events. It can also achieve the objective by building and promoting customer relationships. Like that several options will be available for a manager to achieve the desired result. Thus, identification of alternatives is an important step in the planning process. An alternative is one of the ways of solving a problem or achieving a result. Therefore, each alternative is capable of achieving the objective. Such alternatives are needed to be listed out for evaluation. 5. Evaluation of alternatives. At this stage, each alternative is analyzed in all dimensions to assess its contribution or benefit in the light of resources and constraints. An evaluation criteria will be developed to find out which alternative is more beneficial to the organization. Thus, cost-benefit analysis is done against each alternative monetary costs and non-monetary costs will be estimated and present benefits as well as future benefits in monetary and non-monetary terms will be estimated against each alternative and finally, the evaluation statement of all alternatives will be developed. 6. Decision on future course of action. Selection of the best alternative is called decision making. The selection of the best course of action for the future is planning. So, the best course of action is decided for execution. 7. Development of support plan. The basic plan often requires support plans. For example, the plan to build customer relationships may require Support plans in the areas of human resource, training, 
communication, etc. 8. Development of action plan. Action plan is nothing but sequencing the activities required for effective execution of a plan. The action plan details the time frame for each part of the plan and fixes responsibilities. In other words, it gives the details of what to do, when to do, where to do, how to do, who will do and at what time. 2.5 Types of Plans Plans can be differentiated based on the coverage of organizational activities. Importance of contents, time dimension, etc. The following are the different types of plans. 1. Corporate Plan This plan covers the total organizational activities. The basic focus of the plan is to determine long-term objectives of the company keeping in view the possible changes in the environment. According to David Hussey, corporate planning includes the setting of objectives, organizing the work, and people, and systems to enable those objectives to be attained, motivating through the planning process and through the plans, measuring performance and so controlling process of the plan and developing people through better decision making, clear objectives, more involvement, and awareness of progress. 2. Functional Plan while corporate plan is for the entire organization. Functional plan is for a segment or part of the organization. Functional plans are within the scope of the corporate plan. These plans include a marketing plan, finance plan, human resource plan, etc. 3. Strategic plan. This plan is a long-term plan. This plan is developed after the careful analysis of opportunities and threats in the environment. Strategic plan details the way in which the company plans to use its strengths to exploit opportunities and face threats. It also details the ways of defending weakness or minimizing or eliminating them. 4. Operational plan. These plans are short-term plans covering operational activities of the organization. These plans are based on strategic plans. Examples of operational plans are resource allocation plan control plan, implementation plan, etc. 5. Formal plan. This plan is developed through a well-structured process of planning. There will be a well-defined organizational system, processes and procedures for the development and finalization of plans. Big business organizations develop formal plans. 6. Informal plan. When a well-structured process is absent for the development of a plan, such a plan is called an informal plan. The planning process is based on managers' perceptions and gut feelings, rather than a systematic evaluation of various alternatives, and small business organizations, generally, due to lack of sufficient resources, develop informal plans. 7. Short-term plan. These plans are related to existing operations of the organizations. The plans usually cover a time period of one year or less than one year. 8. Long-term plan. These plans usually cover all functional areas of the business. They take into consideration the existing as well as future changes in economic, social and technological factors. These plans usually involve more than a year and may extend to more than 20 years. Also, 2.6 Barriers to Effective Planning Planning is a managerial function. It is essential for every managerial position and for every organization. Though managers or organizations try to develop plans effectively, they encounter some practical problems in doing so. The following are the important barriers of effective planning. 1. Planning premises are difficult to formulate accurately. Planning Exercise is done under certain assumptions of future happenings. Therefore, uncertainty of future happenings becomes one of the serious limitations and stands as a barrier. Under such circumstances formulating planning premises accurately may not be possible. 2. Rapid pace of change in the business environment, the last part of the 20th century and the beginning of 21 inches century witnessed unimaginable changes in many fields. The boom of organized retailing has significant effects on the economy. The competition scenario, 
technology, applications, store design and layout, product offerings, value additions, and so on are changing at alarming. Therefore, judging the future changes is becoming a very difficult task. These changes are further complicating the planning process. 3. Internal problems. There may be several internal problems that stand in the way of effective planning. The resistance to change among employees of an organization may become a hurdle in planning. Incorporating changes frequently in the policies and procedures may not be possible in all the organizations. Such inflexibility or rigidity in policies and procedures also cause problems for planning. Another important hurdle is financial resources. The developmental plans require financial support. If the organization is facing financial problems, the planners may be forced to compromise in development of plans for external problems. Besides internal problems, external problems like changes in legal system, tax system, technology, etc. also influence the planning process. 5. Efficiency of planners. Planning must be done by people with required skills and expertise. The quality of the planning process depends upon the quality of planners. All organizations may not have efficient human resources for the development of plans. 2.7 Qualities of good plan The following are the qualities of a good plan. 1. Plans must be linked to long-term objectives of the organization. 2. Plans should provide direction for future course of action. 3. Plans must be consistent in terms of external and internal factors. Therefore, organizations can have systematic growth over a period of time. 4. Plans must be feasible for implementation. They should take into consideration the realistic conditions of the organization. 5. Plans must be understandable. Therefore, plans should be simple and expressed in simple terms. The people who implement the plans should understand the motives of the planners to implement them effectively. 6. Plans should be flexible to incorporate changes that take place from time to time. 2.8 Benefits of Retail Planning Process There are several benefits one can get out of the retail planning process. These may include, cost cuttings, enhanced appeal, enhanced customer service and profitability for both the customer as well as for the retailer. Some of the benefits of the retail planning process are, effective cost control, effective stock management, effective store management, effective display management, efficient customer service, enhanced customer satisfaction, providing the requested product, at the right place and at the right time. Striking a balance of size and operations as per local needs. Increased profit by planning. More profitable product combinations. Reduced frequency of overstocking. Minimal stockouts. The other benefits include planning timely promotional campaigns. Improved negotiations by increased buying power. Faster stock turnover. Real time merchandising. Enhanced forecasting capabilities. Market analysis. High goodwill in the market. Reduced competition. 2.9. Summary, retail planning process is beneficial not only to the retailer but to the customers also. The planning process includes several aspects such as the goal, vision, target market etc. With the help of data analysis planning varies from organization to organization and also within an organization depending on the location of the organization and situation arising at different times. The planning includes identification of opportunities, setting objectives. Determining planning premises, identification of alternatives, evaluation of alternatives, decision on future course of action, development of support plan and development of action plan. The consideration of all these factors strengthens the process of retailing. Depending on the conditions, the retail plan is chalked out e.g. a corporate house makes a plan known as corporate plan keeping in view the strategy of its global operations. Likewise there may be functional plan strategic plan, operational plan etc. These are some barriers to in planning like location of premises, ongoing change in the business environment, etc. That should be perceived in advance to overcome these problems. The planning process is expected to comprise several qualities such as being linked to long-term planning, consistent, flexible, etc. As mentioned earlier there are several benefits of the retail planning process such as effective cost control, 
effective stock management, effective store management, effective display management, efficient customer service, enhanced customer satisfaction, etc. Thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video with the next chapter.